Good morning, everyone. What a wonderful time to be alive. To day four of a virtual seminar to mark the celebration of um, men worldwide. As established on Monday, 44 countries of the world have set apart November 19th of every year to celebrate men. And this celebration, we like we said on Monday, is, is inched on six basic pillars, which are to promote positive role models, to celebrate men's positive contribution to society, to focus on men's health and well-being, and also to highlight discrimination against males, to improve gender relations and gender equality, and to create a safer and a better world. For those who are joining us for the first time, well, you have not missed so much, although yes, you must have missed quite a, um, a bit. To catch up on our previous discussion, you can go to Heritage Bank's YouTube page to check what we have discussed on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and today being the grand finale. On Monday, we were able to talk about securing your future through finance and investment. On Tuesday, we changed the conversation a bit and we focused on housekeeping. Oh, that was on Wednesday, housekeeping and estate planning. Then we checked on your health and we said, what was the big deal about your health? And today we'll be looking at one thing that will motivate all of us. Now you can ask yourself, after going Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, what is the way forward? How do I proceed? What are the practical steps that I need to take to get to one, to move from one point to the other? Are you part of those who belong to the school of thoughts that life is already leading you by one nil or two nil, as I say? And then you are trying to see how, can, how you can catch up. Today will be the some practical steps on how to catch up. I have a resource person here on this call with us who will be sharing his life experience and who will be telling us how to move from that point A to point B. His name is Dr. Larry, Dr. Larry Islamuji. Dr. Larry is the founder of Africa's first spot radio station. Life, with operational centers in Lagos, Abuja, Kaduna, and Onisha. The executive chairman of Brilla Media Group, a company with interest in printing, broadcasting, digital services, and consultancy. He's a member of the Institute of Directors, Advertising Practitioner Council of Nigeria, APCON, Nigeria Institute of Public Relations, the Nigeria International Sport Writers Association, SWAN, and AIPS, amongst others. He attended the University of Lagos. 1981 to 1984 with a Bachelor of Science degree, second class upper, where he majored in sociology and he also owed an MSc degree in sociology from the same institution. In 2012, Dr. Larry awarded a Doctor of Business Administration DBA degree by the Business School, Lausanne, Switzerland, for academic work on challenging work values and labor mobility in small and medium organizations in Lagos, Nigeria. He also has an honorary DSC degree from Salem University, Lokoja. Dr. Larry was a recipient of the Kano State 1985 NYSE Award for Excellence, amongst others. He was specially picked from Nigeria for a leg of the Olympic torch relay in Egypt in 2004 when the touch visited Africa. Dr. Izamuji was a member of the 12th Man Presidential Tax Force for Nigeria's participation in South Africa 2010 FIFA World Cup. The current head office of the Nigerian Football Federation is a legacy of this same task force. It currently serves the World Boxing Council as w WBC Cares Africa Ambassador a patron of the Nigerian Boxing Board of Control, NBB of C. He has served on several sport events committees since 1999, when he was a media and publicity committee, when he was 
Media and Publicity Committee of the Nigeria FIFA Under-20 Tournament, a vast experienced broadcast and sport business consultant who first covered the FIFA World Cup in France 1998. He has served as member of faculty of the Executive Sport Management Program of Lagos Business School in the last two years. Dr. Izamoje was named one of the Nigeria's 60 sports icon by the Federal U Ministry of Youth and Sports in celebrating the country's 60th independence anniversary in October 2020. Dr. Larry is married to Mrs. Bridget Larry Izamoje with three daughters and a son-in-law. You will agree with me that Dr. Larry comes with wealth of experience in the field of business, sports, organizational development, as well as even helping you to understand your purpose as an individual. Now, this is what we'll be basing our conversation on. Again, the question is, what are the practical steps that I can take to move from this point to the other? This promises to be an interesting and interactive session. And so we would like that you drop your questions and also things that you require clarity on. Please put them in the Q&A tab, which is currently open. And then this will be brought to Dr. Larry's attention. At the end of the session, the session is about 30 to 45 minutes. We'll take the remaining 15 minutes to answer your questions and give clarity on some issues. At this point, I'd like to make welcome Dr. Larry. Dr. Larry, it's good to have you on this call with us and thank you for sharing your time. I have the floor now, Doctor. Hello, Doctor. Can you hear me? Doctor, if you can hear me, you might have to unmute yourself. The mic is muted. Hello. Hello. It's all good Welcome, now. Welcome, Doctor. Welcome, Doctor. We can hear you, frankly, and it's yeah. nice to see you. Good yeah, morning. Sorry Thank about you for... that. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Good morning, everybody, and um, happy Men's Day to everyone, to all men, and also to women who support their men. I want to salute uh, Heritage Bank for thinking uh, so well of men and putting this together. A very special salute to your chief executive and managing director, uh, Mr. Sekibo, and also to 
Ozena Otulu for the great, great strike in me to do this talk. Uh, I that someone out there uh, will be blessed with uh, this talk and I uh, will have the final push uh, to move. Let me begin by saying that um, the talk this morning is anchored on some assumptions uh, because the topic says chat in the course, let's start. Therefore, I want to believe that uh, we have people who are ready to start, who have not started, who are not decided yet, but who want to get to the next level. And so the whole talk is built around that assumption. Uh, you recall, if you have ever heard about it, that uh, Zig Ziglar uh, just said that your attitude, said that your attitude, not your aptitude at all times, determines your altitude. And so at the end of the day, it comes down to you. And so whatever I say here this morning, whatever I tell you, um, it comes down to you. Like they say, when the chips are down, you are alone. And so let's begin with the you factor. It comes down to you. Next slide. Yes, in talking about the U factor, I want to tell the story of uh, two footballers. One is called Ronaldinho from Brazil, the other Cristiano Ronaldo from Portugal. Before Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi, the world had Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho was so good. Even his coach in Barcelona at that time, Reichkart, said that he could do magic with the ball. He was superbly paid, made a lot of money. Although not paid the way they pay footballers now, he was able to make a hundred million dollars playing football. There was no one in the world that could kick football, gifted as he was like Ronaldinho in the years 2002 to 2009. But Ronaldinho never took training serious, never cared really for the physical side of his trade. Beyond that, Ronaldinho became a party man, loved dark corner sports, was the one who would spend his money on friends, women, luxury life, and other things, and less on training. Conversely, Ronaldinho, compared to Ronaldo, Ronaldo's father died an alcoholic, and so Ronaldo decided never to be found in bars, wasting money, drinking uh, himself and uh, buying for others. He decided to invest, to keep investing. And as I talk to you, the man who makes close to one euro every minute, yes, one euro every minute, Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, has been investing. Rather than being the one in bars, he's been creating bars in different hotels. So he's been investing in hotels. Rather than being the one going into nightclubs, he's been building nightclubs for others, people like Ronaldinho, to go to spend their money and he will be making profit from it. So at the end of the day, it comes down to the you factor. It comes down to you, your choices, your selection, what you want to do with your life. Next slide. Well, before the slide comes on, fine. Muhammad Ali, I talked about the U factor. Muhammad Ali is a very good example of the U factor. We call him the GOAT, greatest of all times in sports. This is so because he lived like a champion, became a champion because of hard work, because of his choice. He said, and I quote, I hated every minute of training, but I said, don't quit. Suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champ. And so he applied himself. He chose the right thing. He decided to continue to train, to make the right choice. And so you've got to make the right choice. And in the right choice, you don't have to be great to start. All you need to do, like Zig Ziglar said, is uh, to start to be great. So note it. You don't have to be great to start. All you need to do is to start to be great. And if you don't choose now, 
If you don't uh, tap into opportunities open to you now, you miss a hundred percent. Michael Jordan was a great, great basketball player. He took opportunities on the courts and money rolled in and he became super rich, investing almost everywhere and living well today now that he's retired. Like Jim Rohn, the great American motivational speaker said, if there are two types of pain that you must go through, one is the pain of discipline, discipline to do the right things, discipline not to leave your future today, and the pain of regret, having to look back and say, oh, if I had known. So discipline, he said, weighs ounces, while regret weighs tons. So at the end of the day, it comes down to you. Next slide. In building this whole thing up, I decided to use the wheel story. No matter how beautiful a car is, no matter how fine a car looks, it cannot really show the effectiveness of the engines if the wheel is bad. It is the same story with life. No matter what they put in inside the car, TV, satellite radio, terrestrial radio, leather chairs, whatever it is, leather seats, whatever it is, if the wheel of the car is not good, the car cannot power well. So the wheel is made to give the balance to the car and the wheel is made to answer the engine so that it determines how fast the car can take you, how fast it can move. And that takes us to our question this morning. In the 60s, indeed 1960, John Mayer came up with what he described as a wheel of life. Using the wheel of a car, he theorized the wheel of life and it became very, very popular since the 60s. And even till this day, people use the wheel of life in asking questions about how well you have done. And so this morning, as I look at the wheel of life, answer questions about your own life and tell if your will is good. Because if the wheel of a car is bent somewhere, the wheel of a car is not well aligned, the car does not move well. May move, but may not move well. So it is with life. If any aspect of your wheel of life is also not going well, it means you've got to make a choice. You've got to do things to get that part of your life's wheel better. And so let's look at the wheel of life. Looking at the wheel of life, so many have thrown in different things from what John Mayer did very, very many years ago. But we want to look at that of Zig Ziglar, what he calls the wheel for life's balance. And so I asked this morning, how is your health? Talking about the wheel of life. When it comes to your health, is your life's wheel well aligned? Can your life's wheel really rev like a Bugatti, like a Jaguar? Can your life's wheel run at, say, 200 kilometers per hour if you are on a very good told run and let's say drive and let's say what about your social life how well do you relate with people will you call yourself an extrovert introvert do people like you do people want to come around you do you like to go around people what do people say about you oh in that office where you work are you a team player do they criticize you? Do you feel bad being in that environment? Your career as a whole, is this where you want to be? Have you done all that will make you advance that career? Are you really giving everything to your company, to your employer, to your business? What about the family life? Do you have enough time to spend every day, every week? every month, every time, with the family, your wife, your husband. How is the relationship? Good, bad, can be better. What about the children? 
do they complain they don't see you well enough? Do you have anything you call quality family time? What about your spiritual life? And as I speak, just keep answering quietly. Your spiritual life, do you believe as a Christian, a Muslim, that you attract the attention of the one above when you call? Even if you don't belong to these religions, which are the most popular in Nigeria, do you go out to look at nature? Just look into the sea. What do you, how, 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 how is your spiritual life? Financially, where will you place yourself? One to ten. If ten is the highest, give yourself a number. One, five. What about your mind? Are you positive about life? But always negative about your environment, about Nigeria, about your workplace, about your family. I know <laughs> him very well, and he spoke not long ago, and said that 46% of Nigerians are miserable, talking about Bismarck Rewane, financial derivatives. And something about our country, the unemployment rate is rising, population is growing, but at the same time, even given that picture, there are people who are still making it, who are still positive about this country, about where they are, about everything they face. Next slide. Next slide. And so the central question, which is what we've been asking, how is your will? Of all these, will you say your will is good? If your will or your wills are put under a car or under a truck, how fast can it go? Answer, are you sure yours will do 100 kilometers per hour? We'll do 40, we'll do 120. How is your will? How is your health will, spiritual will, work will, mind will, family will? Like I said, starting out, it comes down to you, to your choices. Next question. Next slide. And so we are told this morning, or I am told this morning to motivate you, to tell you that there's light at the end of the tunnel. And so whatever you have scored yourself, talking about your will of life, in whichever area you chose, whatever your mark is, there's still light at the end of the tunnel. What you should start doing is what I call take baby steps. Take baby steps. Start small, start small and end big. Start small and end big. I come from the world of sports. And so like 11 players on the field, we like talking about the 11 P's in helping you take your steps. Number one, from this moment, don't live the way you were living. Have a plan. Have a plan for your life's will. Where do you want to be with the family? Where do you want to be with your career? Spiritually, where do you want to be? And so have a plan. It's like budgeting. Budget how you want to use your funds. We'll come to that. How you want to spend time with the family. So you must have a plan. Even if we take it to acquisitions, if you plan to build your own home, have a plan, short-term plan, middle-term plan, long-term plan. You just can't live life the way you were living it. Mark Twain said, the best you can do for yourself is to take one step, a little step, and before you know it, you end up greatly. 
the secret of getting started is getting started indeed. And so you project into your plan. You must project into that plan. So whatever you do, whatever you face, whatever you have, go back to that plan. Have that passion to see that plan come to fruition. And so be passionate first about what you plan for and have the passion for that thing you have planned for. So there's no use planning for a home when you know you cannot attain it in a particular part of town. And so you must have the passion for whatever you have planned for. I like this car, therefore I want this kind of car. It may be a Toyota Camry. If that is what you want to do, that is what you want to drive. Get the pictures, even online, of the inside of a Camry. Know what is special about the engine. And so the love for it will always help you project into that plan and have you do the plan. Proclaim it as you go. Let it be on your mental dial. I have this to achieve. I have this to accomplish. This is what I want to do. Say it to yourself and at times to somebody close to you, maybe your wife or your children. Tell your wife, tell your husband, December next year, we want to leave this house for our own building. So once you say it, it helps you to keep the plan going because the person will always remind you, I hope you are doing well with that thing you told me. And then you've got to prioritize. You've got to prioritize. What do you spend time on, money on? You've got to prioritize. Practicalize your plan. If it means having to throw some funds in some places, do it and note that you have done them. Be positive about where you are headed. These small steps will lead to big steps. Be very positive about them. Nobody says it will be easy. And so persevere, persevere. If you allow me to go a little religious, even God said with sweat on your face, you will eat bread. So persist, stay. And when you do anything towards achieving your plan, praise yourself, praise yourself. If need be, talk to your husband, talk to your wife to also praise you. Those are the things that will keep you on track. And I add another, pray. I have seen that there's an unseen hand in everything that we do in life. Next slide. Next slide. And so the specifics. If it comes to your health wheel, you've been told this week, and I'll just add, eat right, eat right, do some exercises, 30 minutes, thrice a week. If they are not good, they will not be made. Take supplements. In the morning, you take cooked yam and maybe fish. In the afternoon, rice, chicken. In the evening, pounded yam, fish and chicken. You have just taken a lot of carbohydrates that day. And so you need supplements to help your body. Sleep well, sleep well. Look for those things that will help you sleep well. If you are positive about life, negativity will be taken off and you can sleep well. If you set goals that are realistic, measurable, attainable, you will sleep well. If your health is good, you will sleep well. Note those things, there are some colors that your body just won't work with. So check the color of your room, the room where you sleep. Some with lights on, they can't sleep. Do routine medical checks. Do routine medical checks. A doctor friend once told me that once you are 40 in Nigeria, something is already working on you as a black man or you are working on something. And that's why medical doctors will tell you that high blood pressure 
for example, because of the very tough situations that we face as men, you are the fire extinguisher. Everybody is calling you. You are the man. Your mom is calling you, even grandmother, dad, brothers and sisters, wife, children. You are the one trying to put out every other person's fire, and yet you are on fire yourself. Little wonder, Bishop T.D. Jakes preached, leading and bleeding. You are bleeding, yet you have to lead. And so do routine checks. Avoid self-medication. Know your body like you know your car. If you are driving a car and a fault is about to come, either it will show you physically, or if it's a high-end kind of car, high-tech car, you will see something on the dashboard. And so know your body. Know when your body is complaining. Your mind, have a positive attitude to life. Think positively. Now you have started throwing little, making little, little baby steps. Know that at the end of the day, like the baby who was first carried when born, later started sitting, standing, or crawling, standing, and walk. That is what your story will become. Like an airplane, from today you are taking off. You will soon find your cruising altitude. The best years of your life are just starting from today. And so you are taking off to a safer zone where you can look down and say, I was there. And so have a positive attitude. Create time and money for your family. And by that, I mean your wife, your children, your friends. Have a network of friends and be found in them. Perhaps a, a good way to start is to join a club. It may be a city club. Hello, doctor. Self-develop. Self-develop. It's another way of starting something new. And as you start self-development, it will show, your managers will know, that when you say something during meetings, yours is different. Just because of what? The choice you have decided to make from today. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Now, the, the, the perhaps the toughest of them all, talking about the financial wheel, because like I, like I said, even to buy your holy book, to get the holy book, you need to pay. Someone sang No Romance Without Finance many years ago. And so if you want to be romantic to that woman in your life, for that man in your life, you need finance. But the biggest mistake so many people make is that they start saving when they have finished spending. And so you earn, and the first thing you do is to spend. It is very wrong, says Warren Buffett. For those of you who do not know, Warren Buffett is one of the richest men in the world. And he says, you must learn the habit of saving properly. Do not save what is left after spending. Instead, spend what is left after saving. And Larry Zamoji asks, if you work at Heritage Bank, every month Heritage Bank pays you. What do you pay yourself? From today, start paying yourself. When Heritage Bank pays you, you've got to pay you. And paying you, I advise, is to stack up, is to start saving. And so when you get it, 
from Heritage Bank. Before spending it, take it out in your own pay. Before they all come to you and start scratching their heads, giving you all kinds of requests, take care of yourself, pay yourself. Like I said in my book, Scoring Life's Goals, they will not die. Those who begged you 10 years ago, who came last year, have come again this year. They will come next year. They don't die. So take care of yourself. Pay yourself. Stack up. There will always be rainy days. Just like sunshine comes, darkness also comes. Prepare for the sun and prepare for the rain. Pay yourself from the Hide it somewhere. Stack it up eventually. And the rules are simple. Keep it in, in a secure place. Not under your bed. Because if you don't see it, you don't spend it. And I mean your money. If you don't see it, you don't spend it. There are many ways of keeping it so that you don't see it. You can look, keep up for a year or two. I once had the highest door. Lock it up. You don't see it, you don't spend it. So when they come, it's not even what you to spend. Emotions will not take over. Your money, your money, I brought it. You woke up at four, passed through for people in Lagos. The Lagos traffic suffered, closed at 6 p.m., 8 o'clock. Nine, you got home, woke up again, your body aching, and now you have the money. And the first thing you do is to spend? No. The first thing you do is to save. So your money must work all the money from today. Employ your money. If you want to make your money work, invest your money. Do things with, that will make your money grow. Just like you work so hard so that you are promoted. Make your money work so hard so that that money will increase. That it is its own promotion. Start small today. Don't say, oh, how much do I earn? What do I have? Start small. You can start with 10%, 20%. And then you can grow. Start small. Even God in creating heaven and the earth taught us how to start small. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It was when it was the sixth day that he created man. Don't announce yourself too early. The problem with so many of us in this country is that once we make some money, we go and buy cars. And once choice part of town, you have announced yourself. So don't announce yourself too early. The bus thing about not being able to maintain a car and so many who go buying cars do not first prepare for the money with which to maintain the vehicles and so when the vehicles go bad and they cannot repair friends see them and the greeting is no longer good morning but where's your car what happened to your car and so don't announce yourself too early plan first for what you will use to maintain a vehicle to maintain a house, remain a tenant where you are before moving to that part of town. Go generic. Go generic. When it comes to buying things, fashion and others, you know what you have done. You are like a man in the dark, winking at a woman in the dark. You know what you are doing, but nobody knows. Ladies are talked inside. Tell you to take off. The labor if it's by hand. All the time I have some time to be delivered because they needed to engrave my name and do other things on the watch. And so when it was delivered, my wife and I were in a particular country then, and I wore the watch, 
and I was waiting for her to say, wow, what you have is super. I waited from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. She didn't talk to me. And I said to her, so you're not, you didn't see this my watch? In Pigeon, I said to her, so you're not seeing so I read something new. And she told me, I didn't even know. And so you know what we are doing. So many people don't care. So go generic. Set goals. Set goals. And always remember, a baby and a little child. Today you are a baby. You are starting small. But you will eventually start sitting. You will eventually start crawling. You will eventually stand and you will eventually start running. It begins with your baby steps, your first step. Next slide. Next slide. Ne next slide. Right. See the future at all times. And when you see the future at all times, go for it. See the bigger picture, go for it. And my advice to you this morning, in seeing the bigger picture, know where you are. So do self-evaluation. If you are owing anybody, you are where we call minus. And so you've got to fight your way out of minus to zero and then to plus. So together, you've got to pay off your debts. And so pay off your debts. Pay off your debts. And then change your, change your spending habits. Change your spending habits. I tell you this. Someone theorized staycation instead of a vacation. There are people, vacation, the word vacation, a holiday, is meant for people who have worked. Even God himself did not rest until he worked for six days. What have you achieved? What have you worked that you are already planning a vacation? A vacation is a way of telling yourself, thank you. Of telling your body you have done well. Of resting, getting energized for the next day. But for so many people, it is a show off thing. Who are you showing off to? Why don't you save what you have now? Grow it to a level where perhaps airlines will be the ones begging you for free tickets or for them to just do things with you. That's why someone theorized staycation rather than vacation. Staycation, in quotes. If you live in Lagos, have you been to the Unicorn Stadium? What is the story of the Unicorn Stadium? Why was it called the Unicorn Stadium? From, from King George the Stadium, like uh, King George the Fourth Stadium. Who scored the first goal there? Have you been to the National Museum? Have you seen the car on former of the one-time head of state, Mortala Mohammed? Do you know the story of this country? Have you been to Badagri to see the slave chains? Where is the seat of government in Lagos? Which is the highest building in Lagos? What are those things you notice when you drive in the city of Lagos? If you are driving from Adjoge to Victoria Island, do you notice changes in the quality of cars, quality of dressing, designs of homes? There are things you can see in your city. Stay, stay, save your money. See your city and know it well before you go on that vacation rather than borrow. If you have saved enough and you want to do it, go thank you to yourself. You can if you have planned for it. And when I talked about planning, planning can be planning for a vacation, planning for a staycation. You must plan it, not just putting your hands in your money and then you buy a ticket or some go borrowing for a vacation. How do you enjoy that kind of vacation? Again, I advise, mind where and what you buy. Mind where you buy. If survival in the open market, let somebody say they saw you there. There's nothing wrong. People are made to be seen in markets. So must you go to where it is much more expensive? Or you want to tell your friends you bought in 
that expensive boutique. Mind where and what you buy. Profile your visitors from today. Get a plain sheet of paper. Anybody who gets into your home, a visitor, note what you gave or what you give. And in the next one month, profile again, check again. You will notice that there are some that you gave malt to that you should have given what we usually call soft drinks. And there are some you gave soft drinks to that you should not have given anything at all or even such a water. Profile your visitors, profile those who even visit you via telephones. They call you and tell you a maker is quarreling with Chinedu, so call Chinedu. And then you stay on the phone discussing what, no, what does not involve you, just because you were called in. And at the end of the day, the networks are getting richer, you are getting poorer. It comes down to choices. Budget, see wealth builders. I'll tell you a story of a footballer as we go on. See wealth builders, financial advisors, people that can talk to you. Invest wisely. Once you have started saving, once you have planned how you use your funds, you then start thinking about investments. But I tell you this, wisely, that's the word, not just investing, but wisely so. Never you invest because a friend member is enthusiastic about a project. That is foolishness. As you see the future from where you stay today, start seeing yourself in old age, when your limbs are weak, when you can no longer do things you do now, who will take care of you? You come aboarding to your children? Who says you cannot enjoy life after work? Start planning for your retirement now. It is said in America that over 70 percent of Americans will need Medicare in old age. In Nigeria, life, expect life expect expect expectancy is about 55 years. You can plan for your retirement, for your health in old age. What are the emergencies you face now? What if anything just com comes up? Where do you draw from? You can even open an account and say emergency account education account, healthcare account. Just see the bigger picture from now. Oh, don't say I don't have all the money for all you have been saying. You may just make it bits, little, little funds to go to each part and you are getting there. I'll give you the story of Robbie Fowler. Liverpool was founded in 1892. Since then, only six people have scored better than Robbie Fowler. What that tells you is that Robbie Fowler would have been paid a lot of money and from sports and sports alone, he would have made a lot of money. But not so. Even when he was banging in the goals and making a lot of money, there was a day he went to the office of his coach at that time, Graham Sooners. And Graham Sooners was receiving a financial advisor and Heritage Bank will talk to you about financial advisors and how good they can help you. And so the coach introduced him to a financial advisor who told the player who was earning well, I'm not saying don't drive good cars because you have money for it. Live well, do the normal things players do, find watches and others, but please get me a part of your earnings and let me start building up a portfolio for you. Heritage Bank, I have been told, are portfolio builders. And so, just like Robbie Fowler did, that man started building Fowler's portfolio. As I talk to you now, Robbie Fowler is doing a project with another company to raise 325 buildings in the city of Liverpool. That will tell you the kind of man he is. He no longer talks football. If you see him on Sky Sports or BT Sports talking football, it is because he wants to just spend leisure time. A man who can never again go poor. All because he started putting some away, just like you have to start putting some away from today. He did not put all away. And so I will not tell you to put all away, but start putting some away. And in the process of doing that, he was also learning skills outside football. And today, Fowler 
apart from just doing property, is also a teacher. Because we now have, even in the UK, the Robbie Fowler Property Academy. Next slide. So for him, it is not about soccer academy. Oh, you hear of ex-footballers, and you hear they all have soccer academies. But this ex-footballer has what he calls the Property Academy, the Robbie Fowler Academy for Properties. And so learn to do something different. And if I didn't say it earlier, it's what we call passive income. Once you put your money somewhere, once you start saving, that money accrues some interest. One cobble, two cobble, but you're already earning something small. It all, it's all about little changes. The picture you are seeing is used to talk about equality. Basically, it's about equality and equity. But with little changes, everybody can be well positioned and everybody can see the ongoing match. Everybody can make progress. And so everyone who has listened to me this morning, just little changes here and there, and you will have a vantage position for your future. Remember, the secret of getting ahead is getting started. Mark Twain says so. Start now, start today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you. It's been an eye opener. It's been a call to action. And it's, it's, it has meant a lot of things for me personally. And this is a time where we say, um, where we respond to questions. The one I want to bring up quickly is, um, I like the way you started um, quoting the greats. And I also want to quote one of the greats that, uh, well, to me, is one of the great, Edwin van der Sar. I am a goalkeeper by, um, by leisure, um, to clear the record. <laughs> and he said something after winning the Champions League um, against Chelsea. It was hard. He said that when you win a game, everyone asks you what's your secret. Meanwhile, it's the same strategy that you that you put in place in the games you lost. Now the question is: Is there a line between what you think in your mind, uh, spirituality, and luck? Because we as people we have tilted towards one side for quite too long. We have gone ahead to pray so much and put in little work. And then also we are saying that everything is thrown to lock. Is there a line that combines these three together? <laughs> Thank you very much. In 1879, Reverend Weaver, who you would expect would quote from the Bible and tell you that there is lock said what separates lock what makes lock what it is is the word pluck p a u c k versus l u c k so pluck is to add action so after praying you've got to move if you sit down and you are waiting for lock and you believe prayers alone will do it for it, you have missed it. And we've said, pity that man who lost his block because he lost his lock. Mm. And so you must add action. Mm. So block rather than wait for lock. Little savings, and while you are doing it, it starts growing, and who knows? one policy another policy i tell you this there was a time i was called and given an iphone because i dropped something small somewhere will you call that luck it was because i moved so pluck and luck will come and in this realm like i wrote in my book scoring life's goals Luck 
is an element of grace. But G-R-A-C-E, take away G and you have race. So when God said you will enjoy grace, there's also race inside. So race, save some money. Race, make the right choices. Thank you very much, Doctor. So um, moving on to the questions that we have. This, the first one is, um, well, it, we are thanking you for your explicit presentation. Now, what are the practical steps in saving for emergencies? And you won't touch what you are saving until it is right for what you are for the target. You know that um, we tend to dip our hands into what we call the reserve when we know that we are out of what, what we are spending currently. But how can I? I mean, what stringent rules can I put in place to not touch the money I'm saving I, um, for a future um, project? How can I do this? How can this be done? Number one, discipline. I have said, keep it far. If you don't see it, you don't spend it. Keep it far, lock it up. Be disciplined about it. Don't get emotional when it comes to money matters. Like I said, these people who come to you scratching their heads, they will not die. They came 10 years ago, they came five years ago, they've come again, and they will come next year. Check, you will find that a lot of the money you make, you spend, and what have you cared for your future? So get selfish. Get selfish with money. Know that at the end of the day, when the chips are down, you are alone. When it's time for old age, you will be alone with Madame. You will be alone with our guy. And so, discipline, commitment, dedication to that goal that you set, and you will not keep dipping into funds. Changing your lifestyle, and you will not keep dipping into funds. Not looking at anybody to determine your own. You go somewhere and your friends are wearing designers. When you start wearing your designers, they may not have designers. So let them score the first goal. You are a second half expert because you are stacking up to show up later. And when you show up, they will be the ones talking about you. Thank you, Doctor. Just like Mourinho, that will park the bus at the half of the game and then let loose in the second half. Thank you. So moving on to the next question that we have here. Hello, Doctor, are you there? Well, since we lost Doctor for a bit, this audio signal is gone. Ah, it's getting interesting. OK, before um, Doctor connects back to us, uh, for many of us who have difficulty in joining the session for today, when um, at the end of this session, you can have a playback on your device, internet enabled device. Just look for the play icon, click on it, and it will start all over again. If it doesn't start, there's also the tracking bar that you can use to restart the. Also, we're going to be uploading this video on our YouTube platform. So later in the day, please check Heritage Bank's YouTube page, like the page, subscribe to the page as well, because contents like this will be coming up intermittently. You can be able to watch this show again. Follow us on our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter, and, and Instagram, all at Heritage Bank PLC. I don't know if we have Doctor uh, back on this call. Doctor, can yes, you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, doctor. So um, thank you for the for that um, answer. Moving on to the second one. Um, one of our listeners wants to know is thanking you for your time and he says this conversation has been very helpful. But he earns 60,000 Naira a month. He is married and has four children. Now I think for you to answer this question, you might probably just take us to how low it was for you to how are you able to start from the from the low? I, I mean, I know the story, but also you can share 
with us to how low you have to go. It lives at Ikorodu and it works in VI. It's, it will be 38 years in two weeks. So there are so many orders in front of him. He earns uh, 60,000 a month. His oldest um, child out of four children is 14 years old. He lives in Ikorodu and works in VI and we will know the, the traffic situation in Lagos and he'll be 38 years old in two weeks. Now the question is, where will he start from? How does he move from that point A to point B, where he can say to an extent, things are getting easier? Number one, discipline. Number two, deep thoughts. You stay in Ikorodu, you work in Central Lagos. There must be areas near Central Lagos that are not as far as Ikorodu. There must be people who you work with, who live in Ikorodu, who own vehicles. Even if they don't own vehicles, perhaps you have co-workers, three, four, five, or let's say four, even two, who also work in that same place and live in Ikorodu. So you can then do joint payments. Rather than you alone paying, if it's an Uber that brings you to work, or there's a vehicle that brings you or a bus, whatever it is, by the time you pull your resources together, you just find that you are taking care of one aspect. If it's somebody who is a colleague, perhaps you know how to drive. He owns a vehicle. You offer yourself to drive him home. As you are driving him home, you are taking yourself home. So it comes to using your number six. And then it is not enough at 38 to just give your whole life to that work. What other things are you doing? Are you using use all 60,000? Perhaps you can start with 5%, 10%. It may look small, but remember baby steps. And then whatever you have saved, you can even go into a kind of farming, open a babbin saloon, and then you have people also doing things and bringing money. You did not say anything about what your wife does. The days are gone when people just have housewives. People now look, for, look more for working wives. Don't give her what is too stressful. But perhaps that thing that you have started, she can just be the one looking at that side of it. I speak to you here. My wife runs Brilla Printing Press. I can't be everywhere. And she's done that now since the year 2000, 20 years. Does that answer the question? When we were much younger, even in the villages, our parents never allowed us to just spend the whole day playing. They took us to farms. What, what else can the children do to also help the boss? As a young boy growing up in worry, two o'clock we close from school, three, four, it may not be what you want to advise, but three, four, my mom will say, go and hawk plantain for another one or two hours and come back. We were all supporting the family. We were all helping to build. And even meals that you take, if you know you cannot buy the most expensive, I tell you this, one of the very nutritious meals you can take is anything with Titus fish, and yet it is about the cheapest. As doctors, they will tell you, Omega, Titus fish, and yet it is not as expensive as the other types. And so it's about changing your lifestyle doing a few things here and there that you know will still carry you 
the days when you start wearing designers, when you start living big, when you start buying chicken every day will come. But for now, nobody knows. People see you, they don't know what you took in. You can at times make the more expensive type every Sunday. I'm not saying don't take them. You can make them every Sunday or every Saturday. Then you look at how you can just make ends meet. And I hope that will help you. Many thanks, Doctor. Thank you so much. So the next question is, um, our listener is um, requesting for practical steps to starting a business with 10,000 naira. First, is there a possibility, can you start a business with 10,000 naira? And what steps does the person need to grow this business when they start, knowing that you have started a business that has stood the test of time? You can start a business with even 1,000 naira, but go into that area that you have planned for. Go into that area that you have passion for. Go into that area that you know. For example, if you have Hello, doctor. Can you hear me? Oh, we lost the, we lost, we lost the signal from doctors and for, for a bit. We hope they will get back with us shortly. Hello, doctor. Hello, doctor. Uh, I think we we lost the signal from Dr. and he will join us shortly. Oh, okay. Is that of a call? But I'm sure I'm sure Dr. will be with us shortly. So again, um, for the purpose of our listeners who are joining um, for the first time today, this is the day four, the grand finale of our virtual um, seminar to celebrate men worldwide and on monday we started with a conversation bordering around securing your future through finance and investment the session was was a call to action and an eye opener for us you can check the content you can check the conversation you can watch the video on heritage bank's youtube channel just head straight to youtube search for heritage bank plc subscribe and like the page and then watch the video if there are any question that comes to your mind while watching the video please drop it in the comments box and answers will be provided also on tuesday we looked at something about our health and why it's a big deal you know there is this erroneous belief that they say men should always have this um courage and come out and not even not even talk about what they feel or how they feel. Now, we we're able to bust this myth on Friday, on Tuesday, that your health truly matters. You can be able to perform optimally. You can be able to to maximize your gifts. You can be able to live as you're supposed to live only if you're healthy. And that's why I often say, what a great time to be alive. Because for you to be alive, for you to have the health, for you to be able to, to be able to stand and, and do things that normal people do, that means there is hope. But if you are saying as a man, your health is not a big deal, then it, it becomes a challenge. And I think just go to our YouTube page. This video is also there. 
watch it and it's an interest is an interesting piece and also again if you have questions and you need clarity you can also drop your questions in the comment session on wednesday we talked about housekeeping and estate planning and why is it important you know the challenge we have is that we start companies we start um, organizations the proper documentations are, are not put in place. You have lots of, of properties and you want to put things in place uh, so that there will be easy transition after you have gone to the great, great beyond. The truth is that we in this part of the world tend to shy away from this conversation because we, we are really not ready to die. Yes, but the truth is that no one truly knows when it is time to go. And you as a man, you want to do everything in your power to ensure that your family is put in the right condition even after you must have gone. That was why we studied housekeeping and estate planning and why it is key, why it is important. And today we've been having Dr. Larry on the call with us where he has shed light on the way forward how do we chart the court? What, what are the things that needed to be done? What are the things that we should look out for? The practical steps that we should look out for. It has been an engaging session and it's been an high opener for me personally. And I want to also believe that it has been the same with you too. So if you have missed the session, never, I mean, don't bother, don't worry, just um, on your screen, you can always rewind and check the conversation again from the beginning. Also, it will be on our YouTube platform later in the day. You can watch and then drop your questions in the comment. I think we have Doctor back here with us. Doctor, welcome. The, we lost um, signal from your hand. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Okay. Great. I was uh, talking about the man who I was answering the man who wanted to know if he can start a business with. 10,000. And I said, yes, yes you can. You can even start with a thousand naira, but you must project into that area where you have passion, something that you can learn. Um, it may be tailoring. Uh, you must understudy somebody and then um, it may be just babbing. And then you, the next thing you do is you go to your friends and tell them, I can now become your baba. I can sew for you. I can be the one who uh, 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 helps clear death from your home. I can become the one who does laundry for you. So these are things you can start without great funds. And so you just start small and before you know it, you can grow big. Now, when you get that, when you know that, you are still not using the 10,000, except if you are a gardener to buy a few things, working tools. In my case, the first I did was to search myself. You find that everybody's an expert in a particular area. There are gifts deposited in us. A lot of us are giants, but we are just small. We don't know what we have inside. So sit down, look at yourself, check your, your wheel, and see where your gift is. I located in sports. I didn't need money to start building structures. The gift was already there. And so I had to go to radio stations. First, I went to FRCN or even taking the whole story back. I was playing football at the University of Lagos, broke my leg and discovered that, oh, people are now playing. I can talk about them rather than lamenting. So whatever has happened to you, stop lamenting. Look for the positive thing from that experience. And so I started doing commentaries. Someone came to me and said, CNS to Kongpo, you can do this thing on a higher level. And I went to him and the rest is history. And so with that 10,000, buy babbing tools, get closer to a baba, learn on that baba, and before you know, you can print a few things. Become the official when they have events. The official Baba of Heritage Bank. 
the official Baba of the Lagos State government. And before you know it, Paul Pogba carries his Baba when he travels at times. He, won't, he took the Baba to the World Cup. Baba at the World Cup. Wow, that's a big one. Now, this, this explains why most times his head looks like a um, red velvet kick sometimes. Uh, I'm a Mario fan, by the way. Uh, thank you, Doctor, for the exposition as well. Um, it's an amazing time. And so that I would like to know an example of a definitive way to optimize a savings plan. And, you know, someone once asked that, how can, how can he um, not touch the funds that he's saving for a project? Now, also, that I want to know the practical ways, example, to optimize savings plan so as to prevent habits that can be defective to his finances. It's a budget, you budget, and then you see a financial advisor who will help you and tell you exactly how these things are to be done. And then on your part, it comes down to you. I started by saying you, and I ended by saying you. It comes down to you because even if an advisor tells you what to do, the Heritage Bank advisor, the wealth builder who spoke the other day, tells you what to do, and you decide not to do it, it comes down to you. You go down again. And so you must be disciplined. You must be dedicated. You must see the future, the beauty of living where you stay now. Face me, I face you, quarreling with people. Noise from everywhere to that home with a jacuzzi, to that home with a remote control that puts on the AC, to that sitting room with colors that you really like. So it depends on you seeing the bigger picture and applying yourself to it. The determination not to touch it, the discipline not to touch it, the lifestyle to know that your best is still ahead of you. Don't chew your tomorrow today. Don't spend your tomorrow today. At the end of the day, it comes down to you. But I will advise, you see a financial planner who will help you. But if you want to use my layman's way of doing it, know it's righteous. Know it's righteous. See the end from the beginning. Picture how good it will be. I tell you this. Before we moved to where I live now, our residence in Lagos, we were coming from a part of town just to see this very part of town and see the kind of buildings there and kept telling ourselves, the kind of people who live here are just as dark, even if not darker than my wife and I. They have one head. So why did they get there? And so we started cutting down on a few things. And so you must have changes, lifestyle changes. And then you must decide to keep it far. Because if you don't answer, say no. If you don't say no, you go down. Why did Adam lose it all? Because of the inability to say no. No, it's righteous when you want to build. Thank you so much, Doctor. Um, also, Arunze is in Wafo, so he's saying thank you. Um, good morning, sir. Thank you so much for your presentation. It has been very insightful. It is not really a question, but an acknowledgement of the fact that um, he has followed you for years and you have been so impactful to his life, especially with your weekend shows on radio. God bless you and keep bringing smiles to people's face as you just did with ease now. Um, the next question is, um, Thank you. now we've been talking about exercising discipline with our savings. Now, we're not, um, we are faced with an emergency and emergency like hospital bills or um, because of inflation and food prices. Uh, you have to you have mouths to feed how do you exercise discipline with savings especially in the face 
of this kind of emergencies? First, I said, save before you spend. And that's the Warren Buffett theory. If you now want to save before you start spending, you would have a budget and say, savings A, house rent, savings B, future house, savings C, emergencies. And so under emergencies, you can have inflationary trends. So as prices go up, Madame who used to buy a bag of rice for 10,000 and comes to you and says, it is now 34,000. You look at the emergency budget. If at the end of the day, you find that every other thing you are doing can not take care, because if you don't eat right, it affects every other thing. If the children don't eat right, they may, be, they may fail in school. It's that bad. They may fall sick and you pay medical bills and pay and pay and pay. And before you know it, what you have saved up for health, you will even have to crash something to go to that area. So you've got to be flexible. If at the end of the day, you find that the one you are keeping, because what a lot of us do is that we don't even plan for these things. You just earn your salary or you get money and you just keep giving to, to different uh, uh, persons, including your wife. And when the children ask, you just keep giving. So you must have a plan for everything. And so there must be an emergency budget. And if at the end of the day, the emergency budget is affected because of inflation, you can now look at your long-term goals. We plan in five years to own our own house. Now let's make it six years because we've got to remain healthy. We've got to remain alive. So again, it comes down to planning. And that was what I started with when I gave 11 keys. Thank you, Doctor. So one of our listener, uh, he says, I'd like to ask this question verbatim. He says, Doctor, my wife earns way more than me. I feel inadequate, I must confess. How do I maintain my position as the head of the home where I can't speak bills? I am on the borderline of depression. She doesn't believe in shared income and it feels frustrated and less than a man. What is your advice, doctor? Number one, like we say in uh, the marriage school, one plus one is one. You have become a team. And so communication is key. Communication is key. You've got to make her understand that you are together. It's a team. It's a family. It's no longer Queen and Joseph. So you have become one. You too must understand that you have become one. All hands are not equal, let her know. And also accept yourself that hands are not equal. What you then start, what you then need to is to show her greater love and affection. Show her greater love and affection. I tell you this, by the time you make her, you really support her, make her understand that you cherish her job, that you understand, yes, that today she's getting more than you do, but that you are also working hard and do a few things for her to know that you are not just laid back. Let her see you in action, in motion. Who knows? She may be the one that will give you another job. She may even be the one that will support you. I tell you this, back in 1994, I needed to replace my then vehicle. I didn't have enough. My wife was the one who added to complete the funds for that very vehicle. And when I left my job at the mail newspaper, for some time, I had no job. Indeed, I was jobless when we were expecting our first child. She paid antenatal bills and others. So it depends on how you have carried her. It depends on how you have 
greeted her for those things that she's done. Women like talking and women like to be heard. Give her your ears. Let her talk. Appreciate her. Yes, as men, we talk via actions. Maybe just a tap as she passes you. A broad smile or that thing she likes. From that little money you have, you buy her something. Women just like to be appreciated. It may just be staying with your friends and just hugging her or just saying something good about her. They just like to be appreciated. And once you start doing those changes, and I told you about the last slide was about little changes. So the little change will be first your approach to her. The little change will be to self-development. The little change will be using your neck to look for greater opportunities so that other things will come. The little change will also be changing a few things about your own lifestyle. And by the time you put all the little changes together, you will have a perfect team, a perfect home. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Thank you, Doctor. It's been uh, an amazing time, I must confess. Uh, the questions have kept on coming in and we really need to end the session. But I won't stop the conversation here. Um, we can always take it further. Again, this um, video will be on YouTube, so you can watch the video, drop your questions in the comment section, and we can take the conversation forward. Um, Doctor, the final question. This listener has a piece of land in the village as an inheritance. Is the first son. But there is so much pressure on him to build a house. But he does not see himself living there. He also does not think he will recover the investment. What should he do? When it comes to building, there are three words. Location, location, location. Your first house can be anywhere but your second house must be somewhere. Hello, Doctor. If they will not allow you to sell it, answer them. Wisdom is key. It is the principal thing. Even the holy book says, the Christian holy book, Proverbs 4, 7. And then you take the other funds and look for a good location. And you have answered them correctly, and yet you have also answered your own question of not really building. So you can put up something very small. And so it's not a question of because gave you the you must now carry your funds from the city where you are planning to do something in a very good location to that poor location no the highest you can do is to use that same land trade off some part of it if need be or leave it there for some time you can start farming and tell them you are not ready it's all about wisdom do not invest in anything including building anywhere that will not give you good returns communication is key dialogue is key and don't live your life because of what people say live your life because of what your heart tells you wow this is actually the the, the best way to to end this session with with you living according to your to to what you earn and according to what will make you comfortable thank you so much doctor it's been a wonderful time with you i must confess um i have learned a lot and i'm sure that people listening to us also must have learned one or two things um, on this call i have um the group head of corporate communication uh mr fella ibidakwa uh, it would like to say one or two things and also um, drive this conversation forward. At this point, I'd like to hand over to Fela. Fela, 
you have the floor now. Thank you very much, Femi. Um, can you hear me, Femi? Loud and clear. Yeah. Fantastic session. Um, my my job is um, very simple. I'm meant to give a vote of thanks, but just before that, um, Doc, I must say that um, it's been a fantastic uh, an hour and, and a bit. Um, I've heard your voice for a long time, and I'm sure a lot of people have. And um, I, and I remember, and I still do to today, um, being able to visualize everything you anything you say on radio. You know, when you were, you know, you can almost see it through your words. You know, um, exactly what you're trying to portray. And I just thank you profusely, you know, for for giving of your time today. Um, I also. It's amazing, you know. Um, um, I've heard you in some other platform before, but um, I was just putting some notes down. And one thing that came to my mind was that, you know, sports is not just entertainment. Almost sports is uh, is life. You know, your your ability to create the bridge between uh, uh, sports and um, and life. You know, for me, I think I think it's just um, it's just amazing. So thank you. Um, very much again. Um, you know, we decided to, to we decided to come on this uh, journey just to celebrate men, um, but I think it, it's taking another turn in terms of almost to ginger up men um, in the different capacities as as you have um, said today. Um, Doc, I want to thank you very much on behalf of the management and staff uh, of Heritage Bank for for your time. I'm sure this is just the beginning. I'm sure you know we will still find a way, um, maybe through Ozena or through other people that can reach you to co-op you to do you know some other things for us. But um, we'll be more than happy to have you do some other things for us. Um, I like to thank all the other speakers, um, Mr. Elvis um, Asai. Mr. Uh, Dr. Okafo, um, Frederick, and our own Victor Makwe for the time spent over the last four days um, in celebrating and also just to get men, you know, to realize to realign, as it were. Um, I, I was looking at, you know, the whole concept of International Men's Day. I know in the in the religious setting we have um, Father's Day. I've always believed that is one of the same, but you know. Just looking at the the website of International Men's Day, they there's a link between boys and men, um, and there are six pillars actually, and coincidentally, almost all those pillars was what you know Doc you know uh, also touched on, and they are you know talks about um, the nation, the society, uh, community, family, marriage, and and childcare, and I think all, almost all those things were were touched on. You know, in 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 those uh, your your slides and also in the presentations from other speakers um, here in Heritage Bank. You know, um, again, Doc, we started small, baby steps, um, and we're trying to we're trying to grow it. Um, it's you know when you when you kept on talking about um, the 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 practicality of the your your um you answering those questions that were posed to you um earlier um i wrote down the word vision here you know um and it was almost to say that in all those things you were talking about when you say you drove down to um, the location that you wanted to uh, live in you know those yeah. are the things that they used to encourage us when, when we we're young that um they used to encourage us to read a lot of books they used to encourage us to because in reading those books you unconsciously you you form a vision of what you want to do in life and i think you know uh, just if i can you know just to add to what you were saying it's almost like regardless of where you are is creating that vision for yourself and then start walking backwards in terms of doing all those 11 p's that that you said you know i i took a lot from that myself and in fact i i had started taking pictures with my phone you know of your slides and then it occurred to me that oh i can always get the full the full slides but um um we will definitely you know uh, be one to um um take notes uh, and as you said you know it's one thing for you to um go to the doctors and be diagnosed of a certain illness and be prescribed 
certain medication, um, but nothing will change until you actually take those medication and you walk in those steps. And, and I thank you again, sir, for for you know for bringing that to the fore. You know, a, a lot of stuff that has been said here. The truth be told, maybe 90% of us have heard it in some way or the other before, but I think just bringing it into you know the the the, the icing on the cake <clears throat> over these last four days, I think it's just you know I, I I pray and I'm using myself an example that at least you know we will be um, more better up the road the next time we see doctor um, because there will be there will be a next time. Um, in the Heritage Bank, we, we we pride ourselves on trying to do three things in, in particular. You know, it's all about wealth building. Um, we've also uh, been able to um, to classify um, using men as an example that all men will fall into three categories. You are either in a place where you're trying to create wealth or you are in the place where you have created this wealth and you are now preserving this wealth. Um, and then after you've preserved it, now you want to transfer it to the next generation. These are the things that we try to do as, a, as an organization using the platform of a banking platform, uh, advisory, and trying to use all these different tools, you know, to help to push, you know, this agenda. Uh, we strongly believe that being able to engage um, men, as it were, again, on, in, on this situation, um, in helping them to build this wealth. You know, be it in your business or be in your career, uh, and also providing tools to to preserve and then transfer. We also believe that, you know, it can tick all the boxes um, that we're trying to achieve as human beings. You know, I was particularly um, um, intrigued by the will that you mentioned, Doc. You know, and and again, I was trying to write all everything down to say that will is critical, and and it's amazing. I think I think you have a a passion for sports and cars, um, Doc. I think. Uh, uh, amongst other things, but I picked those two, you know, because of the, um, the 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 examples you gave. But you know, and I saw that so many people, you know, they always say, you know, men is it that sports, um, money, you know, they mentioned the third one, but I won't mention, you know, this platform. But I think we all know yeah. what it is. But um, <laughs> um, hopefully we we'll, we will go in the right the right course. So on behalf of the bank. Um, uh, and um, Mr. Ifie Sekibo, who is the MD, who has given his unreserved uh, support, you know, towards what we're doing here. Um, the truth be told, you know, we got some feedback from women that um, we have been partial, you know, that we haven't given this amount of uh, um, um, uh, interest, as it were, on them. But, you know, I think women, personally, I think women already have a lot of platforms you know, where they can engage, but we will also do that. And I'm sure um, Doc will also be invited when the women gather in a place like this for you just to, to speak to us again. So um, without much ado, I will uh, hand it over back to uh, Femi. Uh, Th Femi, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, you know, for anchoring all these four days. And um, uh, I'm sure this is the beginning of, of more to come uh, as an institution, but particularly as men. You know, um, it's it's important that we understand the place of men um, and being able to create that support system, um, albeit, you know, through a financial institution to create that support system to help men to achieve, you know, this goal. And this is what we'll try to do. Um, so on that note, I will leave it. And uh, thank you very much, Doc. And thank you very much to all our speakers. Uh, and uh, hope to, to talk to you and see you soon. So I'll hand it back to Femi. Femi, thank you very much. Thank you so thank much, Isola, and thank you to everyone who have joined us, who are tuned in for this session. It's been an amazing one, and we are not ending the conversation again. We are still driving it. Uh, you can follow us on all our social media platforms, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and on YouTube, or at Heritage Bank PLC. And Doctor, thank you again for joining us. Um, I know and I'm sure that when we are finished setting up the bank's full body, We'll invite you to come and share your own football philosophy with us and to see something we can start up with. On this note, we'd like to say thank you once again. Thank you so much for celebrating with us here at Heritage Bank. Till we see, maybe on this platform or maybe on another platform next year. Please take care, stay safe and be the best that you can be. Bye for now. Thank you, Doc.